an esteemed music producer, poet, author, painter and prolific songwriter, tonight's guest is a true artist in every sense of the word. However, he is perhaps best known for his role as the enigmatic frontman and chief lyricist of Australia's progressive rock pioneers and recent ARIA Hall of Famers, The Church. The band with whom this musical maestro recently celebrated its 30th anniversary, a period in which he penned more than 20 albums, of which spawned such seminal tracks as The Unguarded Moment, Almost With You, Metropolis, and of course, the US Top 40 hit, Under the Milky Way. The artist is Steve Kilby, and these are the five songs which changed his life. Yes. Can a song change your life? Did these songs change your life? How do songs they change do, your life? Songs do change your life, because when you're a musician, you have these, and when you're young, well, I did anyway, I'm very sensitive, or I would have these pivotal moments. Some of them actually, like the very moment it all happened, everything, it was like the whole cosmos was aligned, and this song came in, for example, Turn, 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 came over a PA system at the Olympic swimming pool in Canberra when I was 11 and entered my consciousness and everything was there, was like, it was like an experience. And the song forever imprinted on my brain um, the information that it contained. And where, Big Star, where'd they come into your life? Okay, <clears throat> Big Star, um, in the 1970s, Things were kind of getting, good music was getting a bit scarce on the ground. And I read a review, um, I used to scour the independent music magazines looking for things that might interest me. And I kept reading reviews of this American band, Big Star. So I had their first and second albums and they were, as, as the review said, they were amazing. But there was a legendary third album that had been made and there was all kinds of delay. Even when it came out, it came out under different names and with different tracks. Um, I got each copy as it came out and it was at first it was just called their third album then it was called Sisters Lovers. I had never heard anything like it before. I took it home and I realised that um, these guys were manipulating parameters that, in music that had never occurred to me. Um, and on this song Kangaroo, it was the first time <clears throat> I'd ever heard a band use the parameter of that the band can all just break down and start up and the drummers mm. kind of, the, to illustrate the kind of the disheveled, dissolute nature of the song and the emotions, instead of being like normal songs they play, in this song the drummer kind of stops and the guitar keeps going, the song, and the, there are kind of strings that come in and slide guitars, but nothing, it's like everything's kind of dizzy, mm. everything is uh, seasick. And, and then the nature of the song, it's like this hazy recollection of things. And the whole song leaves you with this incredible feeling of um, disassociation, um, which, is, is abs which is what rock is all about, is to transmit these um, incredible feelings that no other medium can seem to transmit. And this is Kangaroo. This is Kangaroo. By Big Star. By Big Star. Let's have a listen to it now. Okay. All right. This is a song called... Kangaroo, and it's by Big Star, and it was an album called Sisters Lovers. I first saw you, you had on blue jeans, your eyes couldn't hide. Anything I saw you breathing out, and I saw you staring out in space. I next saw you. It was at the party I thought you was a queen You were all so flirty I came against Didn't say excuse Knew what I was doing we look very fine 
as we were leaving. Like St. John Doing a cool jerk Oh, I want you Like a kangaroo Steve, we've come to track Two that changed your life, mm. um, and this is a band that, that's had a profound effect on you and and um, musically with the mm. church's mm. T Rex. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk us? So who are they? Oh, okay. T Rex um, started life as a duo in England called Tyrannosaurus Rex, and uh, Mark Boland played acoustic guitar and sang these almost unintelligible lyrics that were kind of about Narnia and Lord of the Rings and kind of mystical rainbows and badges and things. And then as the years went past, he slowly evolved into a rock and roll star. And at the very cusp of him turning from this kind of naive hippie into a jaded rock and roll star, at the very moment that he did that, according to me, he got the mixture absolutely right. And he made an album called T-Rex. And when I got this album home, it was the first time um, I'd liked a lot of music before, but I'd never idolised anyone. When I was 16, I took this album home. I looked at Mark Bolan on the cover. Everything set, felt strange and um, new with Bolan. He was tapping into kind of Celtic mythology. And he was just like, just for that one moment before he, he kept going, his transition became complete. And he became a fat, bloated rock star who ended up crashing a car and dying. But in that one moment on this one album, according to me at 16, this was like, this gave me the way to go. This, this is what was, I want to do. This was the pinnacle. It's sensitive. The thing about these songs, they don't mean anything. They're not about anything. It's just a feeling. And the thing about it is, when it's over, I want to hear it again because I don't understand mm. it. And for 40 years, that album has had me coming back to it over and over and Isn't over. Isn't that beautiful? Trying to understand what Isn't it is about beautiful? it. And I can never put my finger on it. Mm. So that's incredible value for money. Mm. A record I paid a few pounds or a few dollars for mm. in 1970. 41 years later, I'm still enjoying it. Well, it's extracting some of what a great painting should do. <coughs> as well, you can hang it in your living room and every time you come in, it seems to, you know... Absolutely. ...have something else to offer you that's what, that's, on the wall. That's what all great things could, could, should do. Yeah. I reckon if I live to a hundred, I know I'll be sitting in an old people's home putting... What was he on about there? <laughs> what What's was that? that? What T-Rex? That? What are you doing, T-Rex? Summer deep. <laughs> Let's have a listen to it. Summer deep is in the hills again His lady is a lioness Winds of birds blow through the fields again Invaders from the two worlds A coat of grapes is on my back again I ride upon my zebra Pterodactyl be cut on my brow The truth is like a stranger Be like you could on my friend's side be like you could on my friend's side Summer deep is in the hills again His lady is a lioness Winds of birds blow through the fields again Invaders from the two worlds A coat of grapes is on my back again I ride upon my zebra Pterodactyl be cut on my brow The truth is like a stranger Be like you could on my friend's side Be like you could on my friend's side Be like you could on my friend's side The third track that you've chosen is from a band called The Birds. Yeah. When did you first come into contact with The Birds? <clears throat> um, I heard The Birds when they did Mr. Tambourine Man, which really 
blew my socks off at the time. And then um, they released this as their second single. It kind of really impressed me. I liked the biblical lyrics. I think, um, I think a lot of the things in the Bible are very impressive. Not necessarily the thought behind them, which is often absurd or ridiculous, but the language that it comes in. And um, Pete Seeger had discovered this thing in Ecclesiastes. This thing that he adopted for Turn, 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 it's actually in the Bible. For everything, there's a season, a time to live, a time to die. It's kind of like these, it's part of the Bible, part of the Old Testament. And he set it to music. And then the birds came along and sort of recontextualized it within the terms of jingle jangle rock. They sort of would streamline the song and kind of they had these kind of whispery, very melodic voices. You listen to their records and um, the harmonies and the kind of whispery nature of what they did. And they kind of, you realize that there's the Beatles and there's Stones and then there's something else. And then you keep realizing within this format of electric guitars and singing, there's a million different variations and their music isn't to excite, their music like the Beatles or to inflame or to like the Rolling Stones make you feel lustful or rebellious. It's kind of got a more of a, a kind of a, dare I say it, a holy transcendental, spiritual well, they feeling. Are the birds, aren't they? They're flying They are the birds, the magical yeah. skies. There you go. Let's have a listen to Turn, Turn, Turn right now. To everything, turn, turn, turn there is a season, turn, turn, turn And a time to every purpose under heaven A time to born, a time to die A time to plan, a time to reap A time that you may embrace A time to refrain from embracing to everything, turn, turn, turn There is a season, turn, turn, turn And a time to every purpose on the heaven A time to build up, a time to break down A time to dance, a time to mourn A time to kill, a time to heal A time to laugh a time to weep To everything turn, turn, turn There is a season turn, turn, turn And a time to every purpose under heaven a time to love, a time to hate, a time for war, a time for peace A time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones together To everything turn, turn, turn There is a season turn, turn, turn and a time to every purpose under heaven A time to gain, a time to lose A time to rend, a time to sow A time to love, a time for hate A time for peace, I swear it's not too late 